what does any of this mean? This kind of, we're starting to get into that, that area of mathematics, oh, one of the areas of mathematics where it's like, it's just death by notation, and I can't even get started, I can't even access these questions, because I can't, I don't know what this means, you know? The whole point of notation is to boil things down so they're super succinct and super concise, but when they're that succinct and that concise, it doesn't give you all that many clues if you don't have prior knowledge about what any of the notation means, okay? So, what does this mean, right? This means I've got a function, I'm just calling it F, I could call it G, or um, David, or X, or whatever I want, right? It's just a name, okay? And what I'm gonna put into the function, the particular input that I've got, is, um, is X's, right? Again, they could be anything, right? The example I gave you last week was um, a function that you guys have known for a long time. This function is the area of a circle, right? It doesn't take x's as inputs. I mean, we could make it x's if we wanted, but we call it r. Why do we call it r? Because it stands for the radius, right? So you might as well give it a meaningful label. Morning, okay? So all this means is I have a function. That's what its name is. That's what inputs I put into it. And this is the rule that will tell me how to get from those inputs to those outputs. Okay, that's simple stuff, all right? So then when you see this, what this means is, what you've got in the brackets is, well, what input would you like, right? Like x is any input, but what specific value would you like me to try, okay? Morning. So let's, let's give it a crack, shall we? From 1a, I read that as f of x, so I'm going to read this as f of 1. Right? So I'm going to say f of 1 equals, now I could just do a straight evaluation, I could chuck this into my calculator, good morning. Uh, but it's actually helpful because you want to demonstrate, you understand what function notation is. I'm going to pop it straight into this, I'm going to do a straight substitution even though it's relatively easy to actually calculate. Right? So you can see all I've done is I've replaced all my x's here, which are my inputs. And I've replaced them all with one, because that's the particular input that I want to try. Okay? And from there, I'm just going to crunch the numbers. Um, one minus two plus five. What do you get? Don't overwhelm me all at once, guys. Okay? <laughs> it's going to be four, isn't it? One plus five is six. Take away two. There you go. Easy times, right? Uh, when you have a look at B, I've particularly chosen it because when you've got negative numbers in there, good morning. Uh, these follow the same rules as what we had a look at before, but there are some easy traps to fall into, right? So I'm going to evaluate f of negative 2. But just like I did in the very top line when I evaluated it at 1, right? I'm just going to put in each number, and importantly, I'm going to put in brackets to help me recognize, right? The classic error that many students will make is that they'll, um, they'll look at this x squared, and they'll say, well, I want negative 2. So it'll be minus 2 squared. Except minus 2 squared is minus and then 4, which is 2 squared. But in fact, the negative, that minus sign, it also gets squared. So what happens to it when it gets squared? Positive. Yeah, it just becomes positive. Exactly. It's negative 2 times negative 2. There are two negatives in there, so that's 4. There are two negatives in here as well. That's another 4 plus 5. So that gives us our answer of. All right, happy times. Now, uh, just last one on this first function, right, is these are particular values I want to try, okay? Well, there's no reason why I can't put more algebra into it if I want to. And as you'll see later in this lesson, there are very good reasons why sometimes I want to, okay? So, are you getting sick of it yet? When I do f of 3a, all I'm doing is I'm taking that first function, and everywhere I see an x, I'm going to put in a 3a, okay? So I do it like this. 3a, all squared, minus two lots of 3a, plus five. That's all there is to it, okay? Um, the brackets there help me, again, realize, oh, it's not just the a that gets squared. The 3a is the whole input. So that's why this first term becomes 9a, 9a squared. Very good. So you've got your index laws happening there. Uh, this is going to be minus 6a plus five. And as it happens, well, you, you can't do anything to that. That's done. It's finished, okay? Right, let's move on to this next one. Um, where we're throwing in an exponential there, which is a bit tricky, like, ooh, I can't remember my exponentials either. Let's, let's have a, a go at these questions. Um, a, so this is a new function. I really should have given it a new name, but I was lazy. When I do f of zero, in this case, I'm again gonna replace all of those x's in that line there with zero. So I get three outside of two zero. to the power of zero plus zero, okay? Now, recall your index laws, right? What's 
any number raised to the power of zero, what's it one, equal to? One. It's equal to one. Good. So a classic error is, oh, it's a bit like two times zero. Actually, it's nothing like two times zero. That would be zero. So this is one plus zero. So our answer here is three. You okay with that? Yeah. When you have to go to B, again, because I'm giving you strange numbers here, you need to know your index laws fairly well. Um, F of a half. It's going to be three lots of two to the power of a half plus a half. Okay, now think back, indices, when you've got fractional indices, what is, what's our definition for to the power of a half? Root 2. Now it's going to be root 2. Now not all of you jumped out to, to tell me, oh it's root 2, it wasn't immediately obvious to you. So let me just rehearse why it should be, it's like, oh that's what it has to be. Okay. Um, if I gave you this, I've got a pair of numbers, same base, right? So A, that number at the bottom, um, and I'm multiplying them and they've got indices, right? What do I do to these indices? I'm going to add them, aren't I? I multiply these two numbers, I add the indices, okay? So I get something like this. And the reason why is because I've had, had 2 cubed times 2 to the 5, right? 2 cubed is really 2 times 2 times 2. And 2 to the 5 is really 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So how many 2's do I have? The answer is 8, right? So I'm adding those indices together. That makes sense, okay? Now, when we don't know what something is, we, we try out different <coughs> values, right? So if I said, well, I don't know what 2 to the half is, right? Like, what is that actually equal to? Well, taking advantage of what you just told me, if I multiply it to the half by itself, right, if I multiply it by itself, then according to this, I just, I just add those indices, don't I? Okay? Sorry, Good morning. No. That's okay. Do you want to just, um, I've got one table here. Do you want to just come around that way? Let's see. I hope you can find a spot there. Now, what do we just say? I add the indices, I get 2 to the 1. Okay? Now, hold on a second. 2 to the 1 is just 2, right? So, what's that number that when you multiply itself, multiply by itself, gives you 2? And the answer is, it's got to be root 2. Like that's in fact, that's the definition of what the square root of 2 is. It's the number, you multiply it by itself, you'll get 2. So up in here, I'm going to say that's 3 times the square root of 2 plus a half. Can I do anything else to this? I mean, it's just slightly simpler, not a huge amount, but you know, if I, if I expand this, I can just say, well, that's 3 root 2 plus 3. 3 on 2, thirds like root 2 are famously antisocial, they can't mix with the other numbers, so you're just going to leave it. That's it. That's as simple as it gets. Okay. That was B. Now we're going to do the last one that I've got on the, um, on the board. And this one, you've got some more algebra in there, but be careful. Because this algebra is a little bit sneakier, you just, again, have to be careful with your evaluation of this thing. So when I go f of 1 minus a, First, I'm just going to take all the x's and replace them like this. Okay, so here comes my substitution step. Uh, it's 3 times 2 to the power of 1 minus a plus 1 minus a. Are you happy with that? Okay. Um, is there anything I can do with this thing? Hmm. I, I can do some expansion, can't I? I can multiply this 3 by all of these terms. Okay, and I will in a minute, just like I did here. But before I do that, just like when I went from this line to this line, and this line to this line, I kind of want to interpret what on earth is happening with these indices in here, right? This index to the power of that weird mess. What does that actually mean? It's a bit strange, okay? Now, again, I'm gonna hijack this thing, right? Um, if you told me this, there's a corresponding thing that happens with Division, right? If I'm not multiplying numbers with the same base, but if I'm dividing them. What if I said, well, okay, I want to find the quotient rather than the product. What does the index law tell us? One. I subtract, right? Just like this and this are opposites, right? Inverse functions, in fact. Uh, this and this, plus n, minus n, they're opposites. Okay, you, you happy with that idea? Now, can you see that what I've got there, a to the, whoopsie daisy, I'm sure you use this instead n to the n minus n, that's kind of like what I've got up in here. You see I've got a, a subtraction, right? So what that means is, that is a contraction of something that's being divided, okay? I want to go kind of in reverse now. 
I want to go back to this thing, okay? And that will be a little bit simple. So, what division is this actually referring to? Three times. What, what two things are being divided? One. Good. So, the two to the one is the thing at the front. There it is. They correspond. And what I'm dividing by is two to the A. Very good. Okay. And then I've got this guy just hanging out on the side. Now, uh, generally, just like we don't like having negatives um, on like the bottom of our, of our fractions and that kind of thing, we tend not to like negatives in our indices as well. As you'll discover later on, um, there are sometimes reasons when you want that, but usually not. Negatives, if we can get rid of them, we will. Okay. Um, to the power of 1, that's just 2. Okay. So now if I want to, I could multiply this whole thing through. I could get it on the denominator, the same denominator here, if I wanted to make it all one fraction, but I didn't have to. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. Uh, if you were interested, I mean, the next line possibly could be, you know, it's also equal to 6 plus 3 times 2 to the A minus 3A times 2 to the A all over 2 to the A, but can you see why I didn't really go to that line? Like, does that look simpler to you? Uh, I don't think there's all that much advantage. Okay, so I, I think leaving it here is, um, is fine. 